In 1985, 16-year-old Douglas Casa ran the championship 10,000-meter track race at the Empire State Games. Suddenly, with just 200 meters to go, he collapsed, got back up, and then collapsed again on the final straightaway, with his body temperature at dangerous levels. He had suffered an exertional heat stroke. Fortunately, with immediate and proper treatment, he survived the potentially fatal episode and has since helped save 167 people in similar circumstances. From ancient soldiers on the battlefield to modern-day warriors on the gridiron, exertional heat stroke or sunstroke has long been a serious concern. And unlike classical heat stroke, which affects vulnerable people such as infants and the elderly during heat waves, exertional heat stroke is caused by intense exercise in the heat and is one of the top three killers of athletes and soldiers in training. When you exercise, nearly 80% of the energy you use is transformed into heat. In normal circumstances, this is what's known as compensable heat stress. And your body can dissipate the heat as quickly as it's generated, through cooling methods like the evaporation of sweat. But with uncompensable heat stress, your body is unable to lose enough heat due to overexertion or high temperatures and humidity, which raises your core temperature beyond normal levels. This causes the proteins in cell membranes to denature, creating cells that no longer function properly and begin to leak their contents. If these leaky cells proliferate through the body, the results can be devastating, including liver damage, blood clot formation in the kidneys, damage to the gastrointestinal tract, and even the failure of vital organs. So how do you diagnose an exertional heat stroke? The main criterion is a core body temperature greater than 40 degrees Celsius, observed along with physical symptoms, such as increased heart rate, low blood pressure and rapid breathing, or signs of central nervous system dysfunction, such as confused behavior, aggression, or loss of consciousness. The most feasible and accurate way to assess core body temperature is with a rectal thermometer, as other common temperature-taking methods are not accurate in these circumstances. As far as treatment goes, the most important thing to remember is cool first, transport second. Because the human body can withstand a core temperature above 40 degrees Celsius for about 30 minutes before cell damage sets in, it's essential to initiate rapid cooling on-site in order to lower it as quickly as possible. After any athletic or protective gear has been removed from the victim, place them in an ice water tub while stirring the water and monitoring vitals continuously. If this is not possible, dousing in ice water and applying wet towels over the entire body can help. But before you start anything, emergency services should be called. As you wait, it's important to keep the victim calm while cooling as much surface area as possible until emergency personnel arrive. If medical staff are available on site, Cooling should continue until a core temperature of 38.9 degrees Celsius is reached. The sun is known for giving life, but it can also take life away if we're not careful, even affecting the strongest among us. As Dr. J.J. Levick wrote of exertional heat stroke in 1859, it strikes down its victim with his full armor on. Youth, health, and strength oppose no obstacle to its power. But although this condition is one of the top three leading causes of death in sports, it has been 100% survivable with proper care. When you suffer a heat stroke, there's an oppressive heat that is like nothing you've ever felt in your life. There are three critical life-saving steps to take if an athlete's suffering a heat stroke. First is to get an accurate core body temperature. So she's 106. So can you grab that side? Second is to cool the person down, preferably on site. And third is to use cold water immersion to cool them down. If you don't follow these strategies, there's a very good chance the athlete will die. My name is Douglas Casa. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of the Corey Stringer Institute in the MEAG School of Education at the University of Connecticut. Corey Stringer was an offensive tackle for the Minnesota Vikings in the NFL. In 2001, in the second day of training camp, he suffered a heat stroke. Ultimately, he died from the consequences of that heat stroke. The mission of the Corey Stringer Institute is to prevent sudden death in sport. We do it by four primary methods. One is by educating the public and coaches and athletes and parents. Second is by doing research to try to enhance our knowledge base in this particular field. 
Third is advocacy for policy changes to make um, better rules to keep athletes safer. And fourth is mass market outreach so we can get this word out to the public at large. A great example of the mission of the Corey Stringer Institute is the work we've done in the state of Arkansas over the last couple years. The summer of 2010 was one of the hottest on record in Arkansas. You want to win or you want to coast through the season? Right now you're coasting. You got to run 40 yards, run 40 yards. <laughs> Despite the heat, high school football teams across the state were practicing gearing up for the season. The crowd's up here, guys. Got to be able to focus when we're tired. We got to be able to think when we're tired. <laughs> Will James, a 16-year-old, 250-pound lineman for Pulaski Academy, began to falter. It was heat stroke. Will was rushed to the ICU at Arkansas Children's Hospital. At Arkansas Children's that weekend, there were a total of four high school boys, all in serious condition with football-related injuries. After three weeks in the hospital, Will was released, weak and needing kidney dialysis. My name is Logan Johnson. I'm 14 years old, and I live in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Two years ago, I suffered from exertional heat stroke. My mom warned me about how hot it is I was worried I had been listening to the radio because that we had an excessive heat warning. I told the coach that I was getting really tired, and he just told me to go on. I started to fall. On our last sprint, I fell once, and I was the last one. He was having respiratory failure, and he had pulmonary edema and enlarged heart, so he was basically having congestive heart failure. Back now at 819 with a warning to parents and students as training gets underway for many high school sports. The Corey Stringer Institute has assisted um, the state of Arkansas with trying to make some positive changes. We assisted with getting three laws passed and new heat acclimatization policies in vogue for the state of Arkansas all within the last two years. We got to go to the state capital of Arkansas and watch Governor Beebe sign into law this bill that requires all the public schools in Arkansas to have a tub to cool players that are on a football field. With these changes, the state of Arkansas becomes one of eight states that meets the minimum guidelines for heat acclimatization. And the Corey Stringer Institute is working diligently with many other states so that eventually all of them meet the minimum standards. Keep fighting. Teamwork gets you through, baby. Togetherness. The Corey Stringer Institute is extremely proud to work with the NFL, Gatorade, and Timex in its goals of trying to prevent sudden death in sport. In 1985, I suffered a heat stroke and was extremely fortunate to survive because of the exceptional care I received that day. And it's ultimately the goal of the Corey String Institute to make sure that no parent has to live with the tragedy of their child dying when it was preventable. Something very good has happened to me. It's transpired the last year where I was named a Board of Trustee Distinguished Professor. And it made me think a lot about what it's like to have been a student at the university, an alumni, and then come back as a professor. Being given the opportunity to give back to the university, in particular the NEAG School of Education, is, is really uh, an opportunity most people don't get. NEAG strives to be the best. They create an infrastructure that supports your research 
and try to take care of things uh, so that you can really move things forward. My research and exercise in blood pressure, which began in 1998, and I've been fortunate enough to continue here at the university, has been my major contribution to the field. And in particular, I study a little niche in that field where you look at the immediate blood pressure lowering effects of exercise and it's called post-exercise hypotension. And my work has branched out in recent years looking at the genetic variants that explain the blood pressure response to exercise, but not just blood pressure, other health-related phenotypes. I'm very proud of what the university has become, seeing what a beautiful campus this has become, how it is supported by the legislature, how everyone is striving to make UConn to be the best they can be. It's just a very, very exciting place to be. Today is a very big honor for me and for Kelsey and for Cody and for Corey's family and for the many friends and fans that Corey had when he played football for the Minnesota Vikings. It's a special day because we're here to celebrate his life as well as his death and to recognize that today uh, is a very special day because we're announcing the Corey Stringer Institute of the University of Connecticut. This is actually like finally a dream come true to see this happen. As you all may have read before, each year there's some young athlete who passes out or ultimately dies due to some sort of heat related illness in football or track or what have you in the summer. And every year someone calls me or they, they send me pictures and they ask me, you know, well, did you see this player that died or this player that passed out? And, and for Many years I just often thought, well, why are they telling me? You know, I, I mean, of course I get it, you know. And one day I was standing in my closet and I said to myself, well, someone has to do something. And before I could finish the word something, I realized that the somebody that needed to do something was me. And I finally listened to God. And I realized that he was showing me through these players dying that Corey's death was not just random. It was not arbitrary, that it was something that... Um, 
I guess God knew was gonna happen and and it was it was it was a mission for me um, to help to resolve this issue and I often tell people it's not about me. What I'm doing now is not about me. It's not it's not so much about the legacy of Corey as it is about saving lives. This was a group of people who were going to get it done, and not just get it done uh, for the sake of getting it done, but get it done in a first-class way, align themselves with people who were top shelf. And they've done that with the University of Connecticut, they've done that with Gatorade, the Players Association is involved, and I know many more companies and individuals will be involved and support this great initiative. We're so pleased to join this effort because it's truly a shared mission between everyone you see before you and the respective organizations that we represent because we all have a mission about, a shared mission about keeping athletes safe on the field of play. It's really exciting when you have people around you that have that same passion and they want to win. And I agree with Scott 100% that it takes a team. And we have a great team here assembled to get a tremendous amount of work to get done. Um, the information is real. Just to give you a little bit of a sampling of some of the things the Corey String Institute will do is obviously we're going to have the most extensive website available for the prevention of sudden death in sport, especially as it pertains to exertional heat stroke. You can see the website um, behind me on these banners. Um, I'm just going to tell you that anybody who's sitting here, if there's ever information that we can help you with, um, you know, um, will always be available. We'll do whatever we can to try to get the right information um, to people and try to uh, change the landscape um, for the health and safety issues um, um, in sport um, in our country. Thank you very much.